Hi everyone and welcome back to the Regression and Beyond series. In this video, I'm going to be introducing and running through what is often called the classic structural equation model. As before, uh, in all the videos, the script file and data I'm going to be running through are linked below if you want to run through this uh, yourself. Starting out, a lot of the basic things, nothing different than we've done before, just importing the data and then having a look at it. In this case, we're going to have uh, three latent variables or three main things that we're trying to measure and look at the relationships between them. And we have a total of we call nine indicators or sometimes called manifest indicators. So things that we have observed that we think tap into or measure this larger thing uh, that we can not observe, which is the basic idea of a latent variable model. Here, they're all continuous, keeping things relatively straightforward. We're going to have uh, three indicators for each of these variables. We're going to treat the X's as like uh, is used to measure an independent variable. The M's are going to be used to measure a mediating variable. And then our Y's are going to be used to measure our dependent variable. Now, the classic structural equation model has two main parts, uh, a measurement model and the structural model. The measurement model, again, in the classic uh, version of this is typically uh, done using confirmatory factor analysis, also called CFA. So that is what we are going to start with, the measurement model. And we're going to be using uh, the package Levon, which I really like, especially for uh, latent variable uh, modeling using R. So once we load that package, the first thing we're going to do is specify our model. Now, it is a little bit different than if you were specifying something um, like a regression, we're just adding this equal sign, uh, that is an important difference. So rather than saying like X1, X2, X3, right, our predictors of this thing are writing it out that way, we're saying that uh, X lat, I'm calling them just as the latent variable version, you can name it whatever you like, is measured by these three indicators. Similarly, M lat is measured by these three indicators, y lat, so on and so forth. So we specify that's our model. And the command we're going to run is just the CFA. So we're going to do a confirmatory factor analysis. And then what we want to do is examine the fit of our measurement model. But first, one quick thing to talk about. When you're doing uh, latent variable models or some version of a factor analysis, you're going to need to do something to uh, achieve local identif identification, it's called. In general, when we're talking about identification, like model identification, the basic idea is we need to have enough information available to us in order to be able to estimate the things that we want to estimate. So that's kind of the, the core of identification. And when we're talking about local identification, here we're talking about for each specific latent measure. So for our um, independent variable, that X, that latent variable that we're measuring with those three indicators. We also need to achieve local identification there, or again, ensuring that we have enough information to be able to estimate all the things that we want to estimate. Now with latent variable models, it's going to be very common where we actually have to uh, impose some constraints in order to achieve that identification. Uh, the really, I would say, a pretty common one, it's called the fixed mean, fixed referent uh, loading uh, approach. But basically, the core idea is you're going to need to fix two things. Again, this is generally speaking, you're going to need to fix um, two things. So in this, uh, the fixed mean, fixed referent 
um, approach the we fix one indicator factor loading to be one and then we fixed uh, the mean of our latent variable to be zero. So there are different combinations. You could fix different things, but kind of the core part of it here is that we need to fix two of them. And this is a common uh, default, but I would say one other common one, uh, getting up, depending on your purposes, you could fix the latent mean to be zero and then the latent variance to uh, be one would be uh, another thing you could do to achieve the identification. And I have the breakdown a little bit on the math. You can explore more um, if you want to do that. But just how much information we have basically versus how much are we trying to estimate. So here, just breaking that down again, we have six degrees of freedom, eight parameters. That's why we need, right? That's the difference of two. So that's why we're fixing two things. And then we'll have what's called a just identified model or zero degrees of freedom. So just to give an example real quick of this one, of what I'm talking about here. You'll see degrees of freedom zero because it is just identified. Local identification, we're talking about just a single variable at a time. So just looking at this X latent variable, right? Even if we we're just gonna model that, if we were pretending that was the only thing we had and we're trying to measure, right? We're gonna have zero degrees of freedom, right? We fixed the two things. So we have uh, eight, eight, eight minus eight is zero. Uh, okay, I'll stop ranting about local identification, but you can get into it um, a little bit more and there's some other ways of thinking about it, but just briefly note another thing, latent variables, right, don't inherently have any sort of units. So another way I, you can kind of think about it is that they need to borrow kind of units from indicators is kind of one way of thinking about it. But let's get back to that main uh, output and get away from that uh, super fun identification um, discussion. But basically one of the first things that you're wanna, uh, that you want to do is evaluate the model fit, right? Say like, oh, okay, overall, is this a decent fitting model? Now, uh, the general first test that we often want to look at is this test of exact fits. So this has come up before when we did um, path models in a previous video, and it's the uh, same idea here. Technically, what this is testing, oh, well, first it's a chi-square uh, test statistic. And what it is, we're testing whether or not um, the model implied covariance matrix is exactly equal to our observed covariance matrix. So basically, is our model an exact fit to the data? That's what we're testing here. Again, I actually uh, simulated uh, this data, so it actually looks really nice. And again, this is going to be one of those tricky ones where we actually would actually want it to be not significant because that would mean, oh, our model fits the data exactly. Though often in real world, I, I think I've had that like one time or something like that. Often, you know, things are a bit messier and generally you probably don't want to rely just on that, um, that likelihood ratio test in that chi-square. So with structural equation models, it's common, uh, very common to look at other types of fit indices. So we're talking about CFA, but with when we get to the other parts of the model, we'll be looking at these fit indices as well. So we have the RIMSA, CFI, TLI, SR, MR. So uh, there's other ones, but I would say uh, these ones um, at least recently are probably the more commonly reported. Again, they might not all be reported, but pretty common that you'll see these um, reported with structural equation models. Now, um, <clears throat> there are several different kind of heuristics uh, that you can use. I've thrown um, some in here, but my general rule always like you just have to be really careful with heuristics, right? They're heuristics, they're in, not some solid, um, you know, golden rule. And there's been some cool work here about um, what specific kind of heuristic you might want or, or decision rule you might want to use in a specific 
uh, case. But that aside, these can probably, for better or worse, you know, you can use as a general kind of guide um, when you're looking at things as a whole. But they um, are basically uh, mostly fits, or we say what we say, kind of relative, uh, relative fit. So if we just looked at that chi square, that likelihood ratio test, and it said our model is an exact fit, great, nailed it. Uh, but let's also have a look at these other things. So the CFI. Uh, one over one, that would be by general heuristics, uh, very good. Rooms are extremely small, that would be very good. SR, MR, very small, that would also uh, be good. So CFI, TLI, we want big. Uh, RIMSA and SRMR, we want to be small, generally speaking. So in this case, we have something that says, okay, we actually have a pretty good model. And to break this down uh, a little bit in terms of the output, right, we're going to get each latent factor, and then we're going to get uh, the loading for each indicator. You know, get these uh, covariances, so between our latent variables, the covariances uh, between them, variances, and then we get also these R square. So you can interpret these, for example, of how much of this latent variable, um, uh, how much variation is explained in this indicator by this latent variable. So for example, our X's, right, we're getting um, roughly 30 to over 40% of the variance is explained. So we fit our measurement model. That was our first step. It looks good. It's a good fit. So now we move to our next step, which is the structural part of the model. And in the classic SEM, this is just a path model. So this is something we've done before. I did another uh, video on path models, and we're basically going to be doing that same thing here. Now we just have latent variables built in. So you remember in this hypothetical scenario, we're going to think about it as like a classic mediation model where our X is predicting the mediating variable and the mediating variable is predicting the outcome. So first I am specifying that. So you'll see this part is the same as with the CFA, right? We're specifying these are our latent variables. That's what we're telling uh, Levon. The next part is where we get the regressions. Now, so previously when we did the CFA, we were getting those covariances. Uh, between all of the latent factors, but now we're actually specifying specific relationships between our latent factors. So here you can see I'm re uh, regressing the mediating variable on the independent latent variable, and then our dependent variable on the mediating variable. And I'm just giving these um, uh, a label, the A and B, because I'm calculating that indirect effect, because presumably in a case like this, you'd often be interested in testing that indirect effect against something we did before in that uh, path model and mediation video, which you can check out if you want to see some more on that. So specifying the model, now you'll see the code is slightly different. We're saying SEM instead of CFA, but otherwise pretty similar. And then we're going to do the summary. So first thing I want to look at, and generally, if you're using an approach like this, what would you do next? So we estimated the measurement model, evaluated the fit. Now we estimate the structural model. And one of the basic things we want to do is see, okay, is there a difference? So that's what we're actually going to be doing right here with this LRT test. Technically, it's going to be a chi-square uh, difference test, but we're just going to look at from that likelihood ratio test for each model. So this is the one from the SEM we just ran. We can simply just look at the difference between those chi-squares. Now, the fundamental difference between these models, and if we're thinking in terms of degrees of freedom, in our structural model, it's actually simpler because we're saying X predicts M, M predicts Y, and that's it. However, in the CFA model, where we have the correlations between all of them, right, we would include there's another relationship between X and Y. Now, in our structural model, we've taken it out, which means we get one more degree of freedom. Now, these are nested models, so we can 
test them and just do a simple uh, difference between their chi-square values from their likelihood ratio test. So you'll see from this test, again, it's a difference of one degree of freedom, right? Because one includes that covariance and the other one, we completely dropped it out. So you see a very small difference. And here, it's not significant. But this is another one where this would arguably, in most cases, would be a good thing because we had a simpler structural model that we think is important. And we're saying, hey, the more complex model uh, fits equally well. So my theoretical structural model fits the data equally well to this more complex model. <clears throat> but that is uh, kind of a core starting point. So in this case, it's about the same, which generally would be, we would consider uh, for the most part, a good thing showing that indirect effect. Just as before, we're going to get the uh, factor loadings, and now we're going to have regressions instead of the covariance. So these are regression coefficients. Now, <clears throat> to bring in another thing that we did, if you wanted to test an indirect effect, you could use uh, bootstrapping. Again, something we did in mediation and using the, a path model approach, but just to show you, again, a, a simple version of um, that you can still do the same thing also with latent variables. So this is testing Again, here we estimated it, but we might want to use something like bootstrapping, which is quite common to actually test if that indirect um, effect is meaningfully different from zero, essentially. So that's running, but that's basically the end of it. Um, again, the core structural kind of classic structural equation model, pretty simple. You know, CFA, fit, evaluate, then move on to the structural component, and then you compare those models. That's kind of the classic one. But of course, structural equation uh, modeling is um, kind of a super exciting area, I personally um, think. So down here, you'll see I've mentioned lots of different um, things that you could explore related um, to latent variable models, as well as um, Levon, if you want to check um, that out, uh, mentioning other programs, but yeah, there's lots of really cool stuff like exploratory structural equation modeling you can check out, which is uh, basically incorporating a little bit of the exploratory factor analysis rather than confirmatory factor analysis. Uh, real quickly, just to show, I'm just getting the parameter estimates uh, to look at. So for example, in this case, if we wanted to look at the indirect and then uh, show use bootstrapping for that confidence interval. That's what we'd report over here. Also quite common to report standardized um, things. So like things like standardized factor loadings would be quite common uh, to report. So you often report something like this and look at the standardized results. Uh, but I hope this video was interesting and helpful uh, to you and we'll keep going in this series. Uh, thanks for watching.